Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Lee, and if you're new here, I generally talk about all things D&D. Admittedly, I could probably talk about other TTRPGs that I do play, as I do play more than just simply 5th edition, but we're keeping it focused on D&D and also in Rhymes with Lee, so come on. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about the importance of RP maps and their differences when it comes to RP and combat. When I do a combat map, I tend to make things a bit more simplistic. Admittedly, the artist in me is always going to keep things that are a little bit more detailed, but when I'm focusing on an RP map, I really want things to be engaging and also to help encourage some role play. In this specific map, I had newer players, so I wanted to make something immersive for them. Additionally, I wanted to point out, and I'm going to show it here shortly, I did get a new banner, and so I would like to celebrate. So let me know what you think about my new banner in the comments. I'm going to show that up here right now. But yeah, so other than the new banner, we'll get back to the video. So fundamentally, when I am doing a RP specific map, I want it to be cluttered. Uh, right now, I'm trying to put down some things where I think that there might be these tents. I'm trying to do some kind of bizarre, so really busy shopkeeps. Eventually, I decided that the amount of tents and also the way that the path was looking just kind of looked like a spider. And I love spiders, but that's not what I was going for. The plot of this specific instance was pretty straightforward. Dealing with new players, I wanted to introduce them to combat and I wanted to introduce them to roleplay. So the second part, when they reach the tent inside, that's where they're going to have an audition for Pasha Polk to be one of their Thieves Guildmen, or Pasha's Thieves Guildmen, or whatever. The setting is Kalimport. It's around that time where Pasha Pook was pretty in power, and I think also the Shadow Guild is also one of his bigger rivals. So it's an application. The combat is simply just going to be beating a different, you know, various waves. But the RP side, especially with newer players or even experienced players, I wanted something that was engaging them that also sparked some creativity for them too. So I wanted to put a lot of barrels down, uh, boxes down. Boxes? Those aren't called boxes. Are they boxes? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I wanted to put down a lot of things that clearly showed that this was a busy area and the circus itself was the main event. But you gotta get through the shops to get into the circus. And frankly, the circus really isn't even a circus. Like, yeah, there's a circus in there too, but what actually happens to the players is they're teleported into a fighting pit. So when thinking about making a cluttered map and something that's engaging, I had to make a story for each shopkeep. So eventually you'll see, well, I think you can see because I've already put down some red potatoes and I think some bananas. I've got a food dude, <laughs> a food dude. The guy I'm working on right here eventually becomes a weaponsmith. And then the guy on the far left becomes like a crystal purveyor. I also put in, it's a market. Lots of people come here. So I put some trowels in so I could eventually put some horses in. Yeah, I start with these these trees and then, yeah, get them out of there. We like the palm trees. This is Calport. So I wanted something that was environmentally interesting. Put them in the setting of Calimport. Hot, muggy air, and also something that they could interact with. So each shopkeep has a story, which means that each shopkeep has a theme. So in my middle, yeah, I got my vegetable guy. I believe on the far left, on the bottom side, eventually I will have a cabbage guy. And I really like that Dungeon Draft is a tool that really lets me, as an artist, be an artist without being an artist. I don't always want to design by hand every single map that I'm doing. But I like to create a story, and so the fact that Dungeon Draft allows custom asset packs, that it allows me to just kind of scroll through what they've already got going on for me, I'm able to build those stories. So here I'm making an armorer or a weaponsmith, um, and I think he's pretty important i'm assuming hey these guys these characters these the this team uh this group whatever you want to call them they're eventually going to want to potentially check out some new wares before they go in and apply to be part of pasha pook's guild so there's one story and so i start thinking about what type of merchant is he going to be or even is he even going to be a dude is he going to be a guy a gal a non-binary pal like i don't know 
And so that this is my time for me to think about those things. And so as a GM, I think it's really important for us to consider the stories that we're creating. There have been many times I have come across an NPC that they're like, what's their name? And I'm like, uh, uh, Bob, I don't know. And I hate that I do that. So building these detailed maps is a way for me to preemptively make these shopkeeps, these merchants, these NPCs more engaging. So that helps the RP in general, and it also helps the players. And then for this specific map, the new players coming in have never really RP'd, and we're a bunch of adults who are playing imagination with our dice. And I thought it was really important for them to have a scene, for them to feel immersed, and then for them to also be able to interact with various thingamabobs that are on the tables. So eventually when I put down the crystals for the top left guy, that's actually the table they end up going to. And that's really where the experienced players and the new players really started bonding because they found out that the crystal purveyor is kind of shady and was making fake crystals. But he had some magical crystals too. And so eventually they're going to get inside, they're going to tie him up for some reason, <laughs> and then they're going to steal that. And that's fine. They're here to audition, uh, audition to prove their worth to Pasha Pook. And so, and then up here in the top right, I'm making a dude who sells some meats. And, you know, who doesn't want a nice snack before going into combat? So this was just a nice way for me to really immerse some players into some RP, get them interested in the map, get them interested in talking to the people who sell this stuff, and fundamentally get them out of their comfort zone. It is, yeah, it's, it's nerve-wracking, especially as a new player, to come into this and play grown-up imaginary friends and I'm really proud of this map it was engaging it caused them to start bonding not just as the players but as the characters and honestly you can only meet somebody in a tavern so many times and before you just kind of wish that your players would just meet ahead of time and say how do we know each other but in this instance this was a prequel prequel so the actual game, we added on this little bit. So I made this map, I think, in about, I don't know, like an hour or so. Because I was like, oh no, we need a pretty cool map. And so it was it was a good warm-up. It also got me as the GM really thinking about what I was going to be doing. How I was going to be interacting with my players. So it not only helped them, but it helped me too. I want to end off on a couple final things here. Tips on Dungeon Draft. Turn off your snapping. It's going to make customization for your maps so much better, especially if you're doing some busy work. And generally take off the grid. I use it for sizing, but I always take it off before I import it into Roll20 because the snapping of the two grids gets weird. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next video.